Hey there guys, welcome to tonight's video. There's been a few updates since the last video and probably some things you weren't expecting to happen so fast. So let's get right into it and I'll be right back. Uh, update, the cooling system has been working great. Uh, so we'll get right into it. I'll turn the camera. Once I found the correct amount of antifreeze for the system, it's, I put antifreeze in the system. So working great. That reservoir has been working the way it should. When it gets hot, the level rises. When it gets cold, it sucks it back down. So I just added some more. I'm still working on the uh, appropriate level, but I had it pretty dang close. So yeah, we're about halfway, which is what you want because you want to overfill it because then it will puke out whenever it starts expanding. So yeah, uh, this is the last video, just some small stuff. I put a, a silver stripe on the cap of that, just like I did my oil cap last year. So it just looks more uniform. I relocated my uh, fan controller plug to right in there. It looks a lot cleaner, fit in there nice. Threw this screen filter back on for now. You're probably wondering how I know the cooling system works. How did you How did you know? Like, is the car driving? Yes, it actually is, guys. I finally hooked up with my tuner, and there's a base map on this car right now. So I'm going to show you the programs. Program. I actually use what's called Team Viewer, where somebody else can take control of your computer and do things in front of you. So I use Team Viewer, and he logged onto my computer. I just sat back, and he set everything up. So we're remote tuning. He's in Florida, and I will give you give you his name later, because now he said I'm allowed to share his name since he's comfortable now with tuning these cars. And so far, he's done a great job, but he's very fast. He sends map out, maps out to me left and right. So let's go to the tuning software he put on the computer. This stupid pop-ups are really bugging me. New, new laptop problems. Okay, so he we, we are using a flash tool, and this is what it is. It's loading. It is a Siemens MSS 5X flash tool. I'm not sure where he sourced it from because he was moving so fast selling all this stuff. But I will ask him if you guys are curious. And using these are so easy, like, I was nervous to, to flash tunes to my car, but after doing it once or twice, I learned real quick. And taking logs and all that, I got that figured out. And then we also have a Siemens, uh, this is a checksum corrector. So whenever he, whenever he sends me files to flash, I upload them to this uh, device right here, and it corrects any checksums. Okay, and then we have ROM Raider, which is down here. That's where the logs are taken. And then on my, he has a, he has a set up, so whenever I hit stop logs on ROM Raider, it automatically saves to this folder for me. So here are some logs. They're, the first two are, the, are uh, idling logs, and the other two are from driving. So I'm actually going to flash the car now. So I want to go to my Facebook, and I'm going to uh, download the file he sent me. And then also, you know, we have an IMPA cable. And I have this mark right here. You can kind of see the line. That's because this cable is mated to this port only. So I must use this port every time, which is no big deal. So this is an IMPA cable. I have it taped to make it sturdy because it was acting weird whenever I would slowly hit it. It would, it would keep making the uh, device disconnected sound. So I just stiffened it up and I haven't had a problem with it yet. I mean since. Yeah, no problem since. Okay, so when it comes to flashing this E46, mine is MS42 and early MS42. So I have both an in-cabin diagnostic port for the OBD and a in-engine bay port. This is where I flash the car. This is where he told me he preferred it to be done. So I flash it right through this round port. I do have an adapter for this, which we'll plug into that. And right there is the adapter. It's a 20 round pin. It was like seven bucks, but it works great. I just, I pair these together. So before you even tune these cars or flash them, there's two very important things you gotta do. You have to make sure that A, your battery is hooked up to either an automatic charger or a battery tender. This is pretty much both. It's, a battery, it's made by battery tender, but it's an automatic charger. So that's hooked up. So the last thing you want is your battery dying when you're flashing the car. Because it will brick your ECU, meaning it will become basically locked and you have no more access to it. So you have to buy a new ECU if you brick it. And then the more important, another important thing is to make sure your laptop has a good battery. See, we're about halfway, but it's also plugged in to keep it constant power. Because once again, if it loses power while it's flashing, you can brick your ECU. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up my Facebook and download the file. And I'll show you how to use the uh, corrector and stuff. 
Be right back. Okay, I'm on my Facebook page now. That's me, Tyler O'Leary. And uh, here's my tuner. His name is Vlad Belsky. See, our conversations here are actually kind of cute, you know. <laughs> but anyway, right there is the file that I have to save to the computer. The T-O is my initials, so in case you're wondering. So I'm just going to, so you see he sends, it, he sends it as a bin file. I'm just going to click on it. It should open up a new uh, window in my computer. Let me click on it again. There we go. And then I will run down here and I will save it as this will pop up. And I just got to remember the last four numbers, so I don't get it mixed up. It's 8 11, 11.6. 11 so let, I'm just going to save them in my documents. That's where the rest of my flashes are. There, there's all my flashes. So the new one's 11.6. We'll be flashing this, this one. And this one will be a partial flash. I'll show you the differences in that in a second. So I'm just going to save it. Bam. And that is now saved to the computer to flash the car. And that's easy as that. It's all my computer now. Now we'll run over to the car and we'll flash it. So before we do that, I'm going to turn the ignition on. I think my key's in here. I don't remember. I always lose my dang key every time. All right, guys, ignition is on in the car. I have my cables hooked up here. Got the impa to the 20 round pin. I'm just going to plug it in now. Da -da -da -da. She's a stiff little one sometimes, but usually goes right in like that. Okay, now I do not touch the cable after that. The little light came on, so it means it's communicating. Grab the phone here. The little light is on. You see it's communicating with that port. Now we're gonna go and open our flasher tool. And then what you do from here is, let me get comfortable. Please focus. You're going to hit file. And then I'm just going to hit ECU info to make sure it's connected. And you see how those two dots are flashing in the green? There's my ECU information. MS42, the VIN number pops up. So that means we're now connected to the car. And then just hit no because I don't need any extended information online. So we're going to leave that one open. Also going to open this. Check some corrector. Let's see if we can switch them. Nope, let's just drag it. Now I'm going to open the, the file I just saved to the computer. I'm going to put it in here, and I should correct any uh, checksums. 11.6, right there. You see, it jumps around, so you got to remember. 11.6. One checksum. Come on. One checksum was corrected. Okay, so. And then that automatically, that automatically corrects it. So whenever I open the file again, it's already corrected. So that's done. Now we'll jump... Now, since this is a partial flash, we'll just use partial. Right. So, a full flash was like me and Vlad's starting point. That's that's the longer flash to get on the base map set. Now, every flash after the full, full flash is going to be a partial flash. So, partial right or flash, we want to say. And it's going to open up our files to download. And then right there is 11.6. Bam. And it's going to start flashing. Any moment now, it should begin. See how it's, there we go, 1%, 2% through. So now the car's flashing. Just leave it alone, don't touch anything. We're ready yet. It's 56, 57%, 58%. So after it's done flashing, I'll be right back, guys. See you soon. Okay, so the computer is done the flashing my ECU now. After that, it prompts you to turn the ignition off for 10 seconds so it can reset. So I, I just did that. I turned off the ignition for 10 seconds. And then while that's ignition turned off, then you can now unplug your wires safely. This communication is done with the car. I told you it was tight, didn't I? <laughs> Jeez. All right, so now I'm just going to hit OK. I know the screen's blurry because my flash, my phone's messing with it. And then I'm to, to close this, got to hit File up in the left-hand corner. And then Exit, very bottom. So this car's now flashed. So as you guys can see, uh, using these two pieces of software, so easy to flash the car. I'm sorry if I'm not a big help when it comes to actually tuning. 
because I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I did not want to risk messing up anything with my very first turbo build. So I left it to Vlad to do that for me. He just sends me files, and I flash them to the car. After, after I did it for the first time, I was like, wow, I, anybody could do this. So it's just so easy. Uh, when it comes to, like, piggyback tuning and stuff, that is a waste of time, guys. You're not going to make any... I mean, you'll make decent power, but you cannot actually get in there and fine-tune everything. So I thought about piggybacks and all that stuff, but there's no sense since the stock DME is so dang tunable and, and easy. So probably do a cold start to see how it's acting. Lately, it's been acting rough on cold starts, which, you know, is still expected because it's still just on the base maps. So then I'll show you guys how to use the ROM, the ROM Raider. And don't forget, he did this. All, he set it up. He already set it up for me and everything. So our mayor's all set up. I just took I took up the computer of the car. So when it comes to Vlad and uh, between him being helpful, how fast he is, how friendly he is, and how thorough he is, uh, there's it's just a win-win. I'll definitely be doing business with him. So I'll put a picture of him up on here real quick. But yeah, that's that's him. That's the tuner. Also, also another tuner out there is George Glossville. I was talking to him. He doesn't. You know, he definitely knows what he's doing as well. But I just, I don't know, I felt, my gut told me to go with Vlad, so that's what I did. I just, I was like, Vlad, I'm ready, let's do it. And he, he gets very excited. He loves tuning, so he loves what he does, which is awesome. So now I'm going to hop in the car, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook up ROM Raider, and show you how easy that is to use too, whenever it's all set up for you. Alright guys, so we're back, we're in the car now. I got the back end outside. So, you know, so, so there's no fumes in the garage and whatnot. Laptop is right here to my right. And then here's our cable, using the same cable for flashing as to take logs on ROM Raider. So Vlad says preferably to have the connection already hooked up before you open ROM Raider with ignition on. So this is important for you guys who have the two ports like me, the one, the engine bay one in here. You must have the cap on that one because there's pins in it to complete a connection or else it won't communicate down here. I learned that. It, I'm happy I learned that because if I wouldn't figure that out, I'd been like, what the heck's going on here? So I figured that out yesterday. Here's my port just dangling. I have, to, I have yet to put this panel back on down here. Okay, it's plugged in. You see that light's on down there. Going to put the key in the ignition. Turn on the car. So now there should be communication. And then he says it's, then you open ROM Raider. So it mines down here, this little symbol. Open it. Turn this off because it's in the wing. And then Rome Raider is opening. You know, you'll get prompts in the beginning. Like, yeah, right there. Just hit no. Then hit OK. And then it should open the blogger. Focus. Please focus. Okay. So here we are. Here is the uh, Rome Raider. And then there's all my, it saves all your previously selected options. So that that's this. these were the things I used for uh, a driving log. So we have engine load, engine speed, injector pulse width, the land bus uh, sensors, the O2 sensors, bank one and bank two, and then vehicle speed. I'll just leave vehicle speed up and all that because it, we're just going to take a flash for him. I mean, a uh, log for him for a cold start. So see how it says reading data up there on the right? To make sure it's connected to the car, just select battery voltage to make sure it's reading. And then, yeah, so that's my car right now. It's reading 12 volts. So I'll just unselect it. It'll take it off that list. So these are all on in the side because I have them all checkmarked. So it shoots them over automatically. You have lots of things you can watch. Knock sensors, intake air temp. Once again, this is ROM Raider. It's actually a free open source logging tool and a lot of bmw guys use it free 46s okay so now that it's connected to the car i want to try cold starting this thing see how rough it is it's a little rough it'll try to run hey it's working better it used to shut off on its own so then it's reading. It takes a while for the O2 sensors to start reading. So once they start, I'm gonna hit file. I'm gonna hit start file log now. Just click like that to start it. Right now it's file logging. I think you fixed the problem. 
So it's still cold, so it's high idle right now. That's the cold idle AFR. It will drop down here whenever it gets warm in a few moments. So it's right now it's logging for him. See it's idling a little high. We'll get this all sorted out guys. Still just the bass tune. So it'll, it'll go down here. See it's acting like a vacuum leak. But I have not found any. I'm gonna have to look again. I, I looked three times. This is this is how a vacuum leak acts, though. So you see, he has good AFRs here. Perfect AFRs. Okay, now the lamp buzzer reading. Now the car has calmed down some. Look at that. There we go. Now I'm going to stop the file logs. It's warm. I'll actually wait a few more seconds. Okay, now I'm going to stop it. And that, now this is logged, and he automatically has it set up to whenever I hit that button, it sends a file straight to my right to my logs. So I will send him that file over Facebook. Tell him that, tell him that's a cold start log. Now what's next is he wants to sense sense the new tunes on the car. He wants to see how it runs with the new tune. So the same thing, even though even though you hit stop stop uh, the log, it still records. So you can go straight to hitting you can you can go straight to starting a new log again. So I can literally pull pull out the garage, start driving, and hit start file log, and it starts logging again. Then I hit stop, and then it automatically sends a document over to there. It sends over a uh, Excel document so you can see all the tables and stuff. But yeah, this is a, this is running great right now. I think he corrected all the problems. But as far as drivability goes, this car drives very nice. So smooth between gear shifts, very smooth pulling out from stops. He just does a great job, and I'm very happy with his work so far. So good job, Vlad. Keep keep doing what you're doing. So I don't think I'm going to drive the car today, unless it stops raining. I will come back and record more if it does stop raining. See you guys soon. All right, guys, I think, I think it's going to rain all night, so no driving today. I know it's hard to be, hard to be patient sometimes, but sometimes you got to do what's right. So that was all for today's video. I just wanted to show you guys what programs I'm personally using, what programs he gave me. I'm sorry for no help to people who are DIY tuning. Like I said, I did not want to risk anything because I do not know what I'm doing when it comes to tuning cars. I'm just the mechanic, mechanic and electrician when it comes to the engine bay and the whole car itself. When it comes to tuning, I'm sure I could learn if I took the time to. But just to actually get a good tune and not just some half-assed one by me, that's why I contact somebody. I just think it's so neat that somebody can look at files like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm just going to adjust this and adjust that. So it's just, it's cool. Definitely something awesome that I would like to learn. But yeah, when, I, when we first base tuned it, this thing would just shut off every time. But as you saw, he's making improvements. It stayed running and then it slowly calmed down and just held nice steady idle pretty much. But it still has like a loping, like it was, it was still idle up and down, up and down, which like, like I said, it acts just like a vacuum leak. But I've looked three times and I cannot, I cannot find one. It, it, I did a boost leak test, held up to 12 PSI. I fixed all the couplers that were leaking, had some couplers pop off, fixed all them. So, I mean, as far as boost leaks, the only thing leaking is the compressor housing. So there's no O-ring in here. So that's expected. It's just metal to metal in there. So... So that's the only thing leaking is that at, at about 10 PSI. But it holds 12 PSI just fine. And I have the smallest, the tiniest leak out of here at high PSI, so like 10, 12. And since that's before the math, it won't, it won't really do anything. There's, it, it's acting like there's a leak behind the math somewhere. Unmetered air entering. So maybe a smoke tester will help reveal anything. So yeah, guys, that was pretty much it. And one last time, here is... Vlad's Facebook message him whenever you want very cool dude I want to keep working on this car try to get a budget clutch ordered hopefully for us so I can actually put power down and feel that power again and then next year very important is going to be the subframe because I feel so bad for that subframe back there is taking a beating and that's not good to have the stock set up it's just terrible so we'll get into details on that in a different video because I don't want to make this video too long for you guys 
but yeah, that is how that is how I'm tuning my car. Very simple. Anybody can do like you've seen. I did it. I flashed a file and took a log like in five minutes. So I'm very blessed to have somebody so helpful as him. So yeah, guys, until next time, enjoy yourselves and have a good night, good day, wherever you're from, and I'll see you later.